Welcome back here to this my channel of an everyday life of an SBF fellow. If you're new to my channel, I like you all. I'm SB Answers or SB as I'm known for, for short. I'm all about creating mental health and awareness and sharing my life stories with special syndrome and the like, along with tips and advice with your general health and your mental health in check. So it has been put to my attention as I said before that I'm hoping to do as many autism and series even though there's going to be a broad spectrum of it so hopefully you'll enjoy this, smash the like if you are and also along the way of smashing the like let me know below what you may want to see in the near future so I can get on top of it. So as you know I'm doing the autism and chain series that's going to come into effect now and some of it will be listed under the playlist of that or just wherever it may be. So this one's all about autism and change, transitioning from leaving school. So well, let's begin this and hopefully I'm doing this as said and follow along with me. Right, leaving school. Sometimes we need to learn for us parents or caregivers, uh, even though I can't speak for myself, so I'm just you know, a person with a special syndrome, but for parents and carers they should read a step-by-step -step advice guide on how this will work, on to what to consider when planning the transition from school to adult life. You know, so you can be prepared for any of the changes and challenges that's going to come into play, regardless of what it may be, to provide yourself self-equipped equipment as well as also reducing the factor of any meltdowns. Learn what options may be available and what kind of questions to ask in order to make sure you are fully informed through the teachers, deans or whoever it may be. Making transition decisions as a parent or carer, however, whatever happens after school can be forever daunting for most autistic. The earlier you begin to think about this, the more you time you have to discuss with your child of what's going on and what prepared and well equipped. It's important that professionals keep you and your child involved and that your child's opinions a lesson too. Your child should be at the centre of any transitional planning stage. This is known as person centred planning. As a parental care, however, having the right information can help you support them to consider explore options for their future. Setting the transition process really means that there is plenty of time for the choices to be made and explored and the decisions to be made and if so when necessary to be changed. Some autistic young people may may need the to make the decision making process demonstrated in a way that meets their communication needs. Parents should be able to advise on this and advocate on their child's behalf if need be. Young people who are due to leave school should be involved in transitioning planning from as early as year 9. This is in England and Wales just to be on mind as well as in year 10 in Northern Ireland at least 12 months before the young person is due to leave school in Scotland. Every school around the world basically is different so therefore as I said before, there is limited resources in some parts of what I'm sharing today based in the New Zealand resources, so I'm going to be bringing out certain other resources I've been reading from other parts of the world so we can get a better understanding and hopefully later on in the near future there will be more information here in New Zealand. There may be different options and destinations available such as residential supported living, further education and training, employment support, day services, befriending or mentoring advocating for your child. Whilst your child must be at the centre of the decision making process, there will be times when you will need to advocate for them. This may be at an annual review or other meetings when communicating generally with schools and or further or higher education settings and during visits to service providers. Here are some things that may help. Ensure that procedures around annual review meetings either in England, Wales or Northern Ireland are followed. Having a thorough understanding of what strategies are being used with your child and that these are shared with staff that will be working with them in the near future. Two is make sure that sensory needs that your child may have considered by the new education or residential setting the environment is adapted accordingly. Three, will this child create a personal, create a personal communication passport? Next question is what support is available for your child. You and your child may be entitled to financial support, community care services from your local authority or trust and other support such as blue badges, bus passes and other and home adaptations. Choosing a residential or supported living service. Once you know what sort of provisions you're looking for and the options that are available, it's time to start making a decision. There will be lots of things to consider and questions to ask. What is the services knowledge around autism is the question you need to ask yourself. What autism specific training does the staff have? 
do they have autism accreditation? Does the service use a person-centred approach? How does the environment match up to your child's needs? Consider sensory communication and social aspects. Behaviour support. What approach is used hands-on, hands-off? What experience do the staff have in supporting people with challenging behaviours? Do they have the support of a behaviour support team, psychiatrists, clinical psychologists, behavioural consultants that are on site ready to go for years? How is the behaviour recorded and what feedback can you expect from these behaviours? Are the behaviour support plans actively used? Promotion of independence and self-esteem. How is independence promoted and encouraged? Is it done in a person-centred way? Can they provide activities that they will appeal to young, your young person? How will they be involved in the community? Staff. Do they take the time to match the young person with a support worker that can meet their needs in terms of personality, skills and interests? Have staff in any training, any other conditions such as epilepsy or any other mental health difficulties? What is the approach to collaboration with parents? To service record compliments and complaints? Can you see them? Observe how staff interact with the people that they support, other people using their services. What opportunities will your child have for mixing with others around them that are different or the same as them? How will your young person get on with the other person living there? How do they promote a positive group living situation? How will conflict resolve? Education and training options. If staying on an education or looking for employment, there will be a number of options available. Further education at College of Sixth Form gives your child the opportunity to study it for a number of vocational, professional and academic qualifications. We also said offer other that offer information on further education, training in Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland can help. In England, however, your local authorities, local offer sets out information for a profession they expect to be available for children, young people with special education needs living in this area. Higher education and study at a degree level or above UCAES offers advice on how to choose a higher education course. Online education provides an opportunity for further Room qualifications without having to attend school, college, or university. This may overcome some of the social barriers young people may face when transitioning for schools. Traineeships often a mix, offer a mixture of education and training designed to equip people with experience and skills ready for employment. Apprenticeships offer paid on the job training at a particular school or profession. Supported apprenticeships are structured study programs based primarily at an employer for those living in England. If your child is in education, health and care plan in England, coordinate support plan in Scotland or statement of special education needs in Wales and Northern Ireland, you may wish to contact your education rights services for advice on how the plan may affect these options. Choosing a placement. Try to visit as many different establishments as possible before you make the right decision. This will then give you a better idea of what is available for you, you and your child and what features you and your child can think uh, that are important. You may find a that a particular placement you wouldn't have considered maybe right it so you like its environment and ethos. Study exactly what you need to know in advance and take a list of questions with you. Wherever possible, ensure that your child is central to make the decision. Employment support. Many employers are committed to creating opportunities to pe for people with disabilities but are unaware of the specific needs for autistic employees. The workplace support service pro programs and providers can provide non managerial support advice and guidance for autistic employees and the employees. Developing skills for adulthood. You may also wish to explore what skills and support your child may need to help them make a successful transition to adult life. These can include developing social skills, support for good mental health, access to social growth, buddying or befriending, support to live more independently, learning about managing money, Dumped you can read about the procedures involved in dressing for school in England, Wales and Northern Ireland and some of the sites. What to do if you are also autistic? If you are autistic, it would be helpful to explain this to professionals about the earliest opportunity when you can get it. You can request that they make reasonable adjustments to help you such as giving you information in different formats, providing a quiet area for you to wait before meetings, allowing you to record meetings, shouldn't any teacher chat on a sofa. Making decisions as a young person 
you and your family may not know what you want to do when you leave school and that's okay because obviously it can be scary and daunting. Start to think about it early when you are 14 years old, how this will mean that you have time to consider your options and visit different places so you can make an informed decision later on. Step 1. Planning. What does transition mean? Transition to adulthood means becoming an adult. Planning for this involves looking at what you might like to do when you leave school. Further planning will include looking at where you might live when you are an adult. Who will make decisions? You have the right to make decisions about your future, but you might find support from your family and friends in school also to be helpful. When will I have to start planning for this? This will depend on where you live. Your family and school will support you to start thinking about this in year 9 if you live in England or Wales, in year 10 if you live in Northern Ireland. If you live in Scotland, planning will start at least 12 months before you are due to leave school. Why start at these times? So that you have plenty of time to think and plan for your future and what you want to do and to change your mind about things. Deciding between applying for jobs, staying on and education, this can be a difficult decision and you might be able to want to discuss with your friends, family or teachers. College or sixth form gives you the chance to study for a number of vocational, professional and academic qualifications. Going to university means that you can study at a degree level or above. There are other options such as traineeships, apprenticeships and other supportive internships. If you decide to look for a job, then think about your strengths and interest, what interests you. You might find a specialist service such as employee can help you to develop your workplace skills and find some paid employment. How much help and support will, get, will I get as an adult? This will depend on what you want and need. It's important to find out what benefits and key you will be entitled to and to learn about managing money. If you think you'll need lots of support, you might want to consider the following. Residential, living in a shared house where you want to get support all day or night. Supported living, living on your own but with support from people who come to your house to help you. Some people prefer a balance between receiving support and the chance to live independently. For those you might consider, support centres are place away from where you live where you can go in the daytime during the week to go do different activities. The activities will depend on what they can offer you and what you're interested in. You will go back home at the end of the day. One on one support, this will then this will help you do activities outside of your home. Someone might come to meet you at your home or at an arranged place. And then go along with you to do something you need to do or you are interested in. This could be something like you're doing your shopping, going to art classes, bowling, going to dinner, etc. etc. If you plan to live independently but need a little bit of help, you might like to consider these options. Buying them will be friending services if it's available in your area. This means being matched with someone. You can talk to and do things with, like going to the similar little shops. The person you are paired up with is usually a volunteer who has had training to become a buddy social group. These give you a chance to meet other people and join and organise social activities. Some groups meet in the day whilst others meet in the evenings. It's a good idea to contact the group to find out where and when they meet and an idea of what services they do. Find the services and social opportunities in your Wisdom Services directory. Looking at what is available is step 2. Once you have decided how much support you will need, as mentioned before, and what you might like to do, it is time to look at what is available. You might find making a list of your options helpful. Prepare a list of questions that you can ask about each option. Here are some suggestions to get you started. Can I do what I am interested in whilst going there? 2. Will I get to make new friends? 3. How can I stay in touch with family and friends whilst I'm there? 4. How who will be helping me? 5. How, how will the people supporting me get to know me and what I like? 6. What will I do when I am there? 7. What if I am not happy there? Step 3. Making the decision. To help you, help you make the decision, visit some of the places on your list that you've made beforehand. While you're there, record your thoughts. Here are some ways you can do that. 1. Take some photos to help you remember what it looked like. Ask permission first, however. 2. Tell someone what you think and which ones are your favourite. 3. Voice record what you think of each place whilst you are there. Maybe using a mobile phone to do this or a tape deck recorder. 4. Rate each option as you visit. Green equals grey, orange equals K, red equals rubbish. It might be also helpful to talk to people who have already used these services, school or college. Writing out questions you could ask will help you prepare for this. Some questions you may want to ask is what do you like about it? What don't you like about it? Do you feel you have enough independence? What did you do today? What are the staff like in this 
area of Forte. Well, let's quickly end our short brief overview of autism and change, transitioning, leaving school. Give me a like for thumbs up as well, comment below. Feel free to share these videos around to family and friends. Feel free to subscribe to my channel if you want to be part of my YouTube family and journey with me. Feel free to turn on the notification bell so you can know what's going on with me. So no further ado guys, thanks for, thanks for watching, do what you love, love it too. Until next time, it's be signing out.